One of the greatest fallacies about geography had been that geography is a very vast, at least in terms of the content of the syllabus, and that the topics are very, very complicated and that it is difficult to prepare and what not, what and what not, and so on. Now, the fact is, it used to be vast, but it is still used to be popular. It used to be vast, but it is still used to be simple. It used to be vast, but it still used to be very, very mark switching. It used to be vast, but it still used to be very, very, very much palatable as well. Now, the reason why we're going to be saying it so is because yeah, the subject has not been perceived in a manner that it should be perceived. And why it has not been perceived in that manner? This is largely because yeah, a good number of uh, the daily wage coaches that we're going to be having it right now, they do not going to understand it. Of course, uh, they have their own limitations. Uh, they may be having some uh, strength in that. They have a very, very good public relations. Uh, they are very popular. They can go on to be very popular. Uh, and uh, uh, and all in all, they can go on to have a language which can go on to connect to the masses in general. Uh, but then uh, that doesn't go on to augur well for the preparation of the subject and also for for the civil services uh, students uh, all in all in this case. Uh, now understand that part. Uh, if you can actually understand, first of all, to begin with, to begin with the preparation of the subject, the first thing is to understand the syllabus of geography. Most of the students do not go on to understand this part and they go on to go. It's like yeah, someone asks you to run and you run away straight away without actually looking where exactly that you are going to be running, what is the destination and in how many ways that you can actually go on to simplify you're running uh, or that competition also. It is essentially that part. What we are going to be trying to do here is that we are going to be trying to pick up a concept uh, and a notion uh, which, is, uh, which will go on to help you prepare only 40% of the syllabus of what it is right now. And still, still you will be able to prepare the entire of the topics. Imagine only 40% and by preparing only 40%, still you can go to be a ruler of sorts. Still you can go to have a complete grasp over this topic. Now, in a sense, we have called this approach as a cluster approach. Why are we going to be calling it as a cluster approach? Because this is one of these approaches which is going to be associated with a clustering of the topics, bringing a good number of topics together and also that is, how is it that bringing so many topics together can go on to help you? To begin with, first thing first, understand that part. These are the number of topics that the subject consists of. For example, if you take a look at it, geomorphology consists something like 21. 21 such type of topics uh, that we, and climatology goes on to consist of 20, 19, 13, 9. So all of these uh, components of geography that goes on to form the first paper that is geomorphology, climatology, oceanography is, is what it is and uh, all of these subjects they go on to comprise these many number of topics all in all it goes on to be 134 that is what it is going to be so 134 topics is going to be comprising of uh, what we're going to be calling it as geography now you can go on to understand that part in a different way that is, uh, in the second paper, it is going to be 11 in India's physical aspect, uh, resources 10, 21, and so on. That is the largest number of topics happen to be in agriculture. So what geomorphology is going to be in the first paper, uh, agriculture is going to be in the second paper, and so on. All in all, it is going to be about 123, 123 topics in the second paper. With 19 topics eh, in contemporary issues eh? and if you can if you look at the contemporary issues topics eh, you will observe that eh, a good number of topics are already repeated in uh, various segments of uh, the subject now you will go on to understand uh, why is it that the topic can be repeated when you're going to take a look at the syllabus and the topic eh, you'll be amazed to find that there are going to be good number of topics that have been repeated what allows the topic to be repeated so this is something associated with the way the syllabus is framed. For example, it, it was thought that the, the syllabus of geography will go to comprise 20 sections. 
So one person was given the task of framing a, a topic called as contemporary issues. Now that gentleman, he never knew what exactly is there in India's physical aspect because yeah, the syllabus of India physical aspect was framed separately by a separate person, not by him. So he never knew what exactly was in India physical aspect. He never knew what exactly was there in the first paper. Of course, it is right now known, but this is a, the reason for such type of mistakes and repetitions that have taken place here. And there is no subject in the whole of a civil services examination, that is UPSC, which has a, so many topics repeated in so many different ways a, as it is going to be in geography. And if you if you pick up the repeated topics, a, then a, instead of 257, it will go to come to something like a, only 200, only 200 topics. A. And then when you go on to merge with it, it will go, it will go on to come to something like some 120, 130 topics only, provided you understand it, provided you discuss a concept of it, a, de develop a concept of it in this case. A. So you're going to find that is a, the cultural aspects going to be comprising of in this case, a, eight, a, nine, a, and then 14 is going to be served with a regional planning and settlement a, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> now, what all this goes on to mean? The meaning is that picking up this case, eh, if the entire of these 257 chapters are going to be picked up, they are going to be analyzed. They are interpreted, they are going to be analyzed. Eh, then we are going to find that eh, that is a that is a uh, there are going to be many topics which are related to each other and uh, which may not go on to which go on to be having an applied part of the topic here. Yeah. It's like if you have a topic called as disaster management, eh, then a uh, disaster management of earthquake, the cause is going to be in the first paper in earthquake is going to one tsunami in the first paper. So it only goes into comprise comprise the applied part, but then it doesn't go to make it complete. Largely because eh, in any case you will have to study disaster manage management of this disaster eh, in the first paper as well as in the second paper, only then the topic is going to be completed. It's not going to be half-hearted. So in other words, instead of studying the chapters separately, all of the chapters must be studied and analyzed together. Studied and analyzed together. If you go on to pick up each one of them in a separate manner, you are out, you are gone. Largely because you will go on to double or triple your effort. Eh? Once you go on to pick up a, a holistic approach, that means eh, combining good number of aspects, eh, then eh, you will be able to understand, integrate eh, and analyze eh, the topics eh, in such a manner that the syllabus, the study, that means the total amount of effort that you will have to make eh, in trying to prepare for geography, that will go on to come to 40% of what it is or even less than that as well. So it is going to be all about that is the knowledge that you're going to be getting in a, this approach eh, is going to be correlative and interactive of all the topics. That means it is going to be combining all of these type of uh, topics. Eh. Like you can go to pick up eh, a good number of examples in this case. Eh. Here is going to be one of them. One of them is going to be earth movements and genetic and exogenetic uh, factors, forces. That is a topic that's a separate topic. Earth movement is a separate topic. Endogenetic is a separate topic. It's by and large same and exogenetic. Yeah. It is a part of it. Yeah. Now, when you study this topic, yeah, you will going to find that the core related topics are going to be, one of them is going to be factors affecting landform. That is one. That is going to be one portion of it associated with it, factors affecting landform. Because yeah, what are the factors that are going to affect landform? That is endogenetic factors, exogenetic factors, eh, earth movements, eh, arising eh, and so on. Other is going to be sea floor spreading and isostasy. That is going to be another aspect associated with it. And in the second paper, you will going to have topics like that of landslide as well as an earthquake. That means the catch in this case, therefore, is that why to study only earth movements, endogenetic and exogenetic forces separately? When you study it, study all the topics together so that maybe that in this case, your effort will go on to get doubled. But understand the advantage. That means you study one topic and your effort will go on to get doubled. But then what will happen is that you will be able to prepare one, two, three topics extra. That means in double the effort, you will be able to 
quadruple or maybe six times multiply it six times what exactly that you can obtain out of it that is that is the approach that we are talking about we're going to pick up another example in this case now this example is going to be associated with a topic that you can go to understand it it is going to be uh, one of these topics is going to be we have picked up something like four or five topics now all of these topics must be studied together not exactly that you're going to study only one topic and that you study only the second topic and so on and so forth you must study everything together for example you must when you're going to study continental drift it is foolhardy that you don't go to study plate tectonics and when you're going to study plate tectonics it is again going to be foolhardy that you don't go to study something like a mountain building also when you study plate tectonics, it is super foolhardy that you don't go to understand volcanism. And plate tectonics and earthquake, how is it that you can go to leave it? And earthquake and tsunami, how is it that you can go to leave it? That means whether it is going to be continental drift, whether it is going to be plate tectonics, you must go to prepare all the six topics together. If you don't want to prepare all the six topics together, then Preparing only one topic that will go on to entail a huge amount of an effort. And supposing that you have prepared all the six topics eh, together. You know the advantage that you are going to have? That is you will be able to write something on evolution of the Himalayas. Or maybe that evolution of Himalayas will go on to be like, like this. It is going to be just 5% extra effort and you will be able to know that. There is another topic that you have that is going to be earthquakes in the Himalayas or earthquakes in India and that will go on to become easy for you. Also tsunamis will go on to become easy because it's only an application. Earth earthquake in India you just have to expand it slightly so that you can go on to pick it up. And then structure and physical features of India that is also going to be another component associated with it. A structure and physical features. That means uh, why you going to study continental drift? You don't go on to end up only continental drift. Eh? You're going to end up studying all the six topics together. And when you are studying these six topics together, also going to pick up uh, all of these eh, topics as well along with it. Eh? Only then you will be able to take advantage out of it. Now, let's say you have studied only plate tectonics. Now, in order to in order to study all of these topics, you will have to double your effort, only double your effort by picking up a mountain building, volcanism, earthquake, a tsunami, earthquake in India, evolution of Himalayas. But can you imagine you are preparing a not one, not two, ten topics. That is by clustering it together. Now that is the advantage of the cluster approach. Or when you go to when you go to cluster your approach to say it in other way and to say it in other words. So, following a cluster approach, you can go to observe that uh, you have uh, several advantages and you have uh, several ways of dealing with it. For example, you will go to understand that uh, in geomorphology there are going to be three clusters: climatology two, and so on and so forth. They are going to be all in all all of them are going to be associated with some type of clusters 3 2 and so on so forth you will going to understand it that is a 3 2 1 1 and 1 environmental geography is going to be also one we're going to take a look at it and accordingly you will going to observe that in models going to be two economic geography is going to be three population settlement geography is going to be good amount of it there are going to be seven topics that can be taken out of it and regional planning is going to be one all in all there are 22 clusters where that is going to be in the second paper and there are going to be 22 clusters also in the first paper that is going to be also here in a similar manner that is how it is going to sorry it is going to be first and second paper combined they are going to be 22 clusters now understand that part understand it even better paper 2 going to pick up the, the example of paper 2 when you go into paper, pick up example of uh, paper 2 uh, then uh, you will going to understand that is going to be six in physical setting that is going to be one then two of them is going to be in the resources section in agriculture and so on that also goes on to be having 22 different type of clusters to take a look at it and you will be able to understand it so 22 clusters 
cluster topics in the first paper that you study, 22 cluster paper that you're going to study in the second paper, and together they go on to form. Together they go on to lessen your effort to such an extent that you can't imagine. It is going to be unimaginably, unimaginably simple, all in all. Now we are going to be picking up examples from uh, the whole of the syllabus right now. That is going to be in the form of a table. Now understand this part. We have picked up this uh, uh, section where you can, where what you're going to find here is uh, that is uh, which is the section which are the internal links. Internal links that means within the paper. That is uh, if geomorphology is going to be internal link will be within geomorphology. External link. Uh, then it's going to be chapter link with something else, a chapter link in the second paper as well. So one of them is going to be uh, paper two, where exactly it is going to be linked with it. And of course, we can go to expand on it and talking about dimensions of it and so on and so forth. But then this is in during the course of time, you will go on to understand that part. Now, pick up this topic. We have talked about this example before. You have continental drift, you have plate tectonics, mountain building, volcanism, earthquakes and tsunamis. You don't go to study, end up studying only one topic. You end up studying all the six topics and expanding on your effort. Let's say you go on to expand on your effort and plate tectonics. You may have to double your effort. But while trying to doubling your effort, what will happen is uh, you will go on to prepare some of these things in contemporary, some of the main geophysical aspects uh, like the evolution of the Himalayas, like the evolution of the Deccan basalt that is going to be earthquakes that causes of earthquake in India and tsunami in India as well. That is going to be one component associated with it. That is a part of it. In a similar manner, you can go on to pick up a uh, climatology. So you have topics like that of jet stream, temperate cyclones, tropical cyclones, uh, climatic classification. Let's make it separate for, for an example. Now, its advantage, its linkage is going to be western disturbances. Why is it that the western disturbances come? That is a separate topic. Tropical cyclone, that is going to be a separate topic. And climatic classification, whether you study in first paper or second paper, is going to be the same. And it is again going to be western disturbance that has been repeated of South say. That is where it is going to be connected to. That's the connection that you're going to find it. That means eh, expanding on a topic called a jet stream eh, will go on to again help you double up your effort. But then while you're going to double your effort, eh, you will be able to prepare three topics here and three topics here. Six topics all in all. That's a good catch. It's like eh, a multi-axle truck. A multi-axle truck, what it goes on to do is that it goes on to add eh, five wheels or six wheels to itself. Eh. While it adds six wheels, eh, its load carrying capacity goes on to increase eh, something like some eight, nine times all in all. Its diesel consumption goes on to increase double. Diesel consumption increases double. But then it is able to carry six, seven, ten times the greater amount of load. Now that is why multi-axle trucks are going to be preferred. We are going to be talking about this approach here. Pick up the case of oceanography. In oceanography, you have a topic called this ocean bottom relief. Now, when you're going to study ocean bottom relief, of course, that will going to give you an idea about ocean resources, pollution as well, and to an extent, coral bleaching. Four topics, not too correlated. Coral bleaching is not too correlated because it is going to be associated with coral reefs all in all. But bottom relief, marine resources, and marine pollution are going to be correlated. It is going to be correlated with one topic in Indian geography, that is India's resources, because uh, India's resources in political aspects, both of them will go on to be. Now, this correlationship is not so strong as it was in geomorphology or as it was in going to be in climatology. But then there is a correlationship that is uh, it may not go on to, you may not go on to require to double up your effort, may be required to treble your effort, uh, but still, after trebling, you're going to get no less than a hang of. Uh, something some five or six topics pick up the case of biogeography now in biogeography what you understand and what you know is uh, that is uh, you have topics like factors affecting plant animal distribution now when you understand plant animal distribution why is it not that we're going to understand biomes why is it not that you're going to understand deforestation and conservation because when you're going to understand biomes eh, in different biomes in different biotic regions eh, you have to understand eh, deforestation and when you understand deforestation conservation why not wildlife conservation and if you're talking about wildlife conservation 
why not agroforestry because when you're going to go for forest conservation they are going to be again co-related and once you have done that what are the factors how is it that temperature affects uh, the forest how is it that moisture affects it how is it that uh, winds affect it how is it that dispersal affects it how is it that the animals themselves going to affect it so so many types of effects and non effects and so on and so forth uh, that goes on to make up biogeography when you go on to see the manifestation of this chapter in indian geography you will go to find it's like almost automatically your vegetation section will be over automatically your forest section will also be over automatically your wildlife resources will be over deforestation will be over desertification will be over social forestry will also be over so you don't have to study one topic by studying let's say in this case only two of them in a sense one two and then three only three topics in a in a general sense you are able to get hold of it and mastery over complete mastery and analytical along with analytical ability over 11 topics that's another that's a cluster in a similar manner you're going to pick up another of this cluster here and that is going to be in, in a <coughs> that's going to be environmental geography so we are picking up topics like that of in this case that is going to be Biodiversity is going to be one of them. Ecosystem management, environmental management. Because in trying to manage biodiversity, you have to go for ecosystem and, bi and bi management. Now, when you're going to pick up Indian geography, it's the same thing. Resources of India, biotic resources, wildlife resources, and contemporary issues, deforestation, desertification, and environmental pollution all correlated when you go for environmental management you have to take into account what are the problems and you have to know the problem like environmental pollution you have to know like the problems like that of desertification deforestation and when you manage it and go on to give suggestions so whether it goes on to be an indian job in wildlife resources or biotic resources or forest resources it's the same in the respect to world but then getting to know about it eh, will going to give you a greater amount of insight you will be able to understand it much 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 better in human geography section you have a topic in economic geography like world economic development that is one topic now the same topic that you're going to study it and understand it in population geography is co correlated to it is going to be secularization and that's not secularism i repeat it it's not secularism it's secularization and then social capital is a part of it and then you have in one topic in a uh, model set in contemporary issues it is going to be globalization globalization is going to be one component associated with uh, economic uh, development maybe you can go on to say it's a cause of it it's going to be an effect of it and that is what globalization is going to be all about in this case Picking up a population geography further, in this case, and settlement geography, you will go on to find two topics, migration in first paper and migration in second paper, both of them are correlated. But settlement geography, more properly, you have problems and remedies of urbanization. It is going to be urban growth or urbanization, it's the same thing. So when you're going to be talking about problems and when you're also going to be talking about remedies, you're bound to talk about sustainable development of towns. This is going to be a component. Sustainable development of cities are bound to be and they are they are definitely going to be a component of it. So in Indian geography, you will going to find its core relationship with India's urban problems, with town planning of India, with satellite towns, with sustainable development, all of these four. India's urban problem, world urban problem, by and large the same. Town planning, that is going to be a solution associated with it. And one of these solutions is going to be satellite town. And when you're going to take the solutions further, it is going to be sustainable development of the cities. So think of it. You just have to study one topic that is problems and remedies of urbanization with some case studies. In trying to suggest it, you will talk definitely about the, the suggestions that are going to be associated with the sustainable development of the cities in this case. <coughs> Take it from another angle. That is going to be taking it from Indian geography perspective. Now, when you're going to take it from Indian geography perspective, you pick up some of these topics and components from there. So you have India's physical aspect, physiography, then you have monsoon, floods, drought. 
these are when you go to study certain things like a physiographic regions eh? physiographic regions goes on to form the base of it in any case you have to study that part eh? monsoons flood and drought are going to be co-related to each other in this case eh? and when we are going to be talking about it eh? then eh, it goes on to form the base for all the topics eh, in a eh? in geography in the second paper you must despite the fact that you have you may be having a choice may not be having this choice eh? you must 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 study that part that is physical aspect and then you're going to pick up a resources section of it in resources section as we're going to talk of that is you have one resource called as water resource now when you have a topic like water resource see the uh, linkage that you're going to be having it in the whole of the syllabus and the topics associated with it. So, interlinking of rivers. When you're going to talk about water resources, you have to suggest whether the linkage of the rivers can go on to take place or not. Irrigation is a part of it. Command area development that is going to be in regional planning. Drought, dryland area development because that is going to serve water resources. Yeah? And then drought prone area program, desertification, watershed as a measure in this case. Yeah? Ground and surface water resources because that is a part of it. Yeah? and water harvesting. Nine topics, 10 topics, only study of one topic, water resources, and a plus, add to it, add to it one more topic. So, it's such a good bargain that you're going to study only two topic equivalent, that means equivalent of two topics, and you're going to end up preparing 10 topics all in all. That is clustering, that's the advantage of it. Then we pick up another of this example of clustering that is going to be in Indian industry, and that is, you have new industrial policy, multinationals and liberation. All of these are the topics that are going to be insignificant right now. And they will go on to form a completely different case study altogether. Then you want to be talking about uh, this is linked to, this is something that is going to be linked to globalization, trade policy, export promotion zones. Globalization is in contemporary issues because you are going to be talking about a policy. So globalization is a policy or not. Trade visa policy, export promotion zones, so that is a EPZ is also going to be a part of it and a segment associated with it. That is a component of it. In the second paper, if you can go to continue that part, we have India's cultural setting one. And when you're going to talk about it, think of it, racial, linguistic, ethnic diversities, major tribes, tribal areas and their problems. Three topics you have picked up. You have picked up a racial ethnic diversity without racial ethnic diversity there is you know no way you can go to understand the major tribes eh? and when you are studying it you have to study tribal areas and their problems that is one component but while you study it eh, you must go into a tribal area development program you must go on to understand cottage industry as well because cottage industry is mostly going to be handled by these people only these are the people who are who are the one who go on to make BD, who go on to make what not in different uh, regions. And then, yeah, then you want to talk about the settlement part, India settlement geography. We have already talked about it, but what's just for the purpose of repetition from the from another angle, urban problems is one, slums and town planning, three topics. Uh, so urban problems, one part of urban problem is going to be slum, slum as a problem. And when you suggest something, you're going to suggest town planning as one of the suggestions. Yeah. But then, why are you going to suggest town planning? Why is it that you're going to leave sustainable development? There is no way you cannot, there is no way that you can go to leave sustainable development of cities as one of the suggestions. Yeah. So you just have to pick up uh, only two topics here, urban problems. Only two and a half or one and a half topic here, and you end up preparing four topics. And when you see, when you see regional planning, four of these topics, we are going to be talking about multi-level planning, decentralized planning, and panchayati raj. These are the topics you will not be able to understand it unless you unless uh, you understand cotton industry because cotton industry is the one that is responsible for giving a such type of a decentralized uh, development uh, water resources as well so again five topics in that type of a cluster that you're going to find it so all in all when you're going to pick up such type of structures and all of them you're going to find that your effort goes into a start getting itself uh, less and more and more more and more Coming to the contemporary aspects of it, you will go on to understand this part. Eh? There are going to be two clusters here. One of them that is environmental hazards, 
Environmental hazards is going to be one topic. It's a it's a large topic. There are a variety of it, which in any case you will going to understand it and study it as part of environmental geography. But let's say you're going to pick up earthquake, tsunami, floods, drought, landslide. They all are going to be correlated with a, with a geomorphology and India's physical geology. They all are because. Why is it not that you're going to study in, uh, uh, geomorphology? And without a studying geomorphology, there is no way that you can go to complete it also. And as you can go to see it, it's also going to be the same thing. Environmental degradation, awareness, desertification, pollution, and a correlated with it, it is environmental degradation as a topic. Now, this is a new paradigm that is in the form of a cluster approach and that is introduced in geography to make the preparation very, very easy, very adaptable. And of course, this is one way in which the aspirants will be able to simplify their topics, lessen their burden to such an extent that you can't imagine. Now, that is going to be a smart preparation of sorts in this case. It is this smartness that will go on to ultimately help you. It is with the it is it is this smartness that you have to actually begin with. And if you do not go on to begin with this type of smartness, of course, you will keep on complaining, but complaining to whom? Are you going to complain to Union Public Service Commission or to your peer group? Or to the people who have sown seeds of doubts in your mind. Think of it. To have more such discussions and analysis, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos.